Well guys, with the rounding off of winter and the start of spring, it really is coming to that time where we're gonna really be starting to do some cooking from scratch, some homestead cooking, using what's in the freezer, getting those emptied out, and really just having some fun in the kitchen. And so today I'm starting that fun with this cookbook. This cookbook is from 1992, so it's like 32 years old. And I'm sure everybody that uh, has been in a thrift store in Canada has probably seen this book. So I'm really not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing that I see it in every thrift store, but I figured, you know what? I have to get it and I have to try some of the recipes in there just to find out and also to share with you guys if this book is really worth picking up because you can get it for like a buck 50 still. So we're gonna try some recipes out of here over the next little while and see if this Chatelaine book is worth it. I think the Chatelaine is actually a Canadian magazine. So for American viewers or other places, it may be a little tougher to come across this book, but I will put the recipes in the description below so that you can follow along. So today for supper, we're going to be making curry chicken pot pie with buttermilk biscuit topping. Now I'm pretty excited about that. As you know, we don't eat regular flour. So we're tweaking this a bit and using our sorghum flour. I also don't have buttermilk. So we're using sour milk and I don't have an apple. So we're using applesauce, but all in all, I think it's going to turn out fantastic. So follow along as we kind of dish this up and stay tuned at the end because we're making a special treat for dessert. So it really is very simple ingredients. Like I mentioned, we didn't have an apple. So I'm going to be using our applesauce for that. And we're using our uh, sorghum flour instead of regular flour. But otherwise, chicken breasts, onions, carrots, we're adding a rutabaga because we love rutabagas and just kind of bought a few more. And other than that, it's spices and basic ingredients. So let's get started chopping these up and we'll go from there. So we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil in a little skillet and turn that on to low. And we're going to chop up our onions so that we can fry them to put them in. Now, one thing I am doing with all my onions is I'm keeping the skins because I want to try some natural dye for my yarn that I've been spinning and onion skins make a gorgeous color. If you get a chance uh, to, to look it up, some of the natural dye colors you can get, it really is quite impressive. So we're going to get the skins off these, chop them up, and we're going to get them into our frying pan and then we will bring it back for the next part. So basically while the onions are cooking and frying off in the uh, oil, we're getting our three liter casserole. I think this might actually be a four liter, but that's okay. We're getting that out and we're going to slice up our chicken to get it into the bottom of this pot. Now, one thing I will say about slicing chicken that I love to do is do it while it's still partially frozen because it allows me to really get nice kind of thin slices which I find we all really enjoy when it comes to uh, frying it up, cooking it, that sort of thing. So with Chris's help, we managed to get that perfectly timed up. We've got our three carrots chopped up, our single rutabaga and our four chicken breasts all sliced and into our casserole dish. And as you can see, our onions are ground up beautifully and ready to be scraped on top like so. And then, that to the side we are going to make our white sauce in here so normally you would put your chopped up apple in here as well but i don't have that so we're just putting a bit of apple sauce probably about three quarters of a cup like i say this is a new recipe so we'll report at the end whether that was a big mistake but that'll get stirred in in a moment when we get the sauce going we start with our butter half a cup I've taken two tablespoons out of that because I added it to the onions already. It's called reading the instructions. Use two tablespoons of the butter to do the onions. There we go. And then to this butter, it looks like a lot of butter. We're going to add one tablespoon of curry powder. I'm actually going to do a pretty heaping tablespoon because we really enjoy curry and a third of a cup of our sorghum flour to get this a nice thick sauce. And then we're going to just get that nice thick almost to a paste. And then we're going to add two cups of milk. You definitely want to keep stirring this the whole time because it will burn and stick and be horrible. And once all that flour is incorporated and the butter's melted, we'll get our milk in here. I wish you could smell it, it smells so good. 
All right, we are ready. We're gonna just gradually add this milk in as we stir. I don't want it to go lumpy. I want it to be a nice smooth sauce. I might have to get out my whisk, we'll see. Be very careful when you're doing this because this will stain clothes definitely, so. So we've added in one cup of our milk so far. I'm gonna let that start to warm up and then I'm going to add the next one as it thickens. So before we add in our uh, second cup of milk, we're going to put in half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of dried sage, and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Oh, it's thickening nicely. So I'm gonna to start to slowly add my milk again. Our oven is preheating to 350 while we're doing this so that it's all ready to go. So I had to advance to the whisk. The spoon just wasn't doing the job and I was worried I was gonna get splashed. Oh yeah, look at that, she's thickening up now. I just didn't have it hot enough, look at that. So obviously the sorghum flour works just fine instead of the uh, white all purpose. So we're gonna turn that off. And basically now we just pour it on top Ooh, without getting messy. Get our spatula out. So now we're just stirring this all in, make sure it's all mixed up. I have a feeling if this tastes good, I'm gonna love this recipe because it's very simple so far. All right, and then basically next, we will be making the biscuit topping and dropping that on and into the oven it'll go for an hour. So let's get going on some buttermilk biscuits. So now for our biscuit topping. I will admit I do have a favorite biscuit topping already, but I am going to follow the recipe in the book because that is basically the idea here is to see if some of these recipes are really worth making. And so what we need is one cup of all-purpose flour. Like I said, we're going to substitute the sorghum flour one teaspoon baking powder, an eighth of a teaspoon salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon cinnamon, quarter cup of shortening. Now I'm going to use cold butter for this. I think it will be just fine. And a half a cup of buttermilk. Now, like I mentioned, I don't have buttermilk, so we're going to be making sour milk by taking regular milk and adding a little bit of vinegar in it and letting it sit for a moment. So that's our first step, and then we'll get this mixed up. So basically I put in my quarter cup of butter and now I'm just using my hands to kind of work it into sort of pea size pieces. Uh, that's sort of the same way I would do a pie crust or any other biscuit that I'm making. I'm curious on this one because with the cinnamon and the chicken, I'm, I'm very curious as to how that's going to taste. All right, so we've got that mixed in. I don't know if you can see it there, but we've got, you can see it's basically curdled. That's what sour milk is and buttermilk is basically kind of the same taste i use this for my ranch dressing and everything this method so there we go we'll get that worked in and then we'll drop it in spoonfuls on top of our curry pot pie all right so we've mixed up the dough it's a bit wetter than i would think it needs to be but i'm going to follow the recipe because maybe this will bake up unbelievable for all i know right so we're just going to drop it like so, kind of like a biscuit shape. All right, so we've got it ready here. We'll see how this goes. I'm not really sure. The book doesn't describe whether I should mush it out to cover the whole thing like a pie crust or whether to just leave it in kind of the biscuit droplets. So we're gonna go with the biscuit drops and we're gonna see what happens. Like I said, a little bit runnier than I would have thought it should be, but maybe it poofs up, maybe it crunches up. I'm not sure. So we'll see when we take it out of the oven in one hour. All right, so it came out of the oven bubbling hot. It smells amazing. And now we've let it cool off for probably about 10 minutes or so. And we're gonna dish this up and give it a try. Honestly, it smells so good. The, uh, the biscuit went very biscuity, so I'm quite curious as to how the sorghum really works with this. But without any further ado, we're gonna dish it up. Moment of truth. Let's see. Hopefully it went thick enough. Oh, 
it's a little bit on the runny side. I would have liked that a little thicker, but that's okay. All right, moment of truth here. It's pretty hot. You can see I'm using a tea towel to hold the bowl, but I've let this bite cool off just so that I can try it on camera here. The one thing I'm gonna say as I'm waiting for it to cool just a little bit more is you could make this with rabbit as well. It doesn't have to be chicken. And I think you could probably put just about any vegetables in it. I'm looking at it now and thinking it would have been nice to have had a few peas in there. I always think of peas in a, a pot pie. Um, but otherwise, I think it's amazing. So let's give it a try. That's pretty good. One thing that's interesting is you can really, even though it was a very, very small amount of cinnamon, you can really taste it in there. That's kind of interesting. But, oh gosh, that is really, really good. Definitely going to be making this again. I'm going to try the rutabaga because that was an addition. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This one is definitely getting the thumbs up. I have this little thing that I do in all my cooking books that I write a little note beside the recipes that were good or put stars or things like that. I always think it's kind of interesting to do that because if you find a book in a thrift store, isn't it wonderful to have somebody's notes already in it? So I'm thinking ahead. If my books ever end up in somebody else's hands, they'll have all the notes that I thought when I was making those recipes. But we're going to eat this and then stay tuned because for dessert, we're making chocolate oat mug cakes. All right, dinner is done. It was amazing. The one thing I will say is I didn't love the biscuits made 100% with sorghum flour. Chris loved them. I think next time when we do this, we're going to try it as a half whole wheat, half sorghum or something like that. We're going to play around with it. But the flavor of the actual pot pie was amazing. Uh, definitely would maybe add some peas, things like that. But all in all, like I said, thumbs up even after eating the whole bowl now and coming back for seconds, it definitely is still getting a thumbs up. But now we're gonna move on to some yummy oat chocolate mug cakes. So all of our ingredients are out for the mug cakes. We're actually splurging and using chocolate milk instead of white milk in them. I already have three tablespoons of our oat flour into the containers and now we're gonna mix up everything else. So as I've already said, we already have three tablespoons of oat flour in each of these containers. And now I'm adding two tablespoons of cocoa to each one. That's right, you heard me correct. These are dark chocolatey goodness. Two tablespoons of brown sugar in each container. It's a pinch of salt in each one. An eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder. Eighth of a teaspoon, actually I shouldn't have put that in there yet. Pooey. I should have mixed up the dry ingredients before I did this, but I was just going quick. So we're going to mix them up now. But that was an eighth of a teaspoon of vanilla. It doesn't have to be perfectly mixed up because we still have our wet ingredients to add. One tablespoon of olive oil in each one. And three tablespoons of milk. It's a little harder to pour out of the big one. And now we just mix it and then it's going to be microwaved on high. I usually do one minute and then check it and do another 15 seconds if it needs it. So we'll bring you back when we bring these out of the microwave, almost an oven, and uh, <laughs> give it a taste test. I almost forgot the most important ingredient, chocolate chips. Like I said, this is chocolatey. Now I just kind of sprinkle a few on top. All right, and there they are looking good and ready. And we're going to put vanilla ice cream on top of them once they cool off a little bit. The one thing I will say, you can see these are actually made in little onion soup containers. If you make them in a small coffee mug, they will not work. They will overflow in the microwave. We learned that the hard way. So that was a wonderful dinner, and now we're going to enjoy an amazing dessert here on the homestead. Homestead cooking is what we're going to kind of focus on as we go through the spring here. So hopefully you enjoyed this content. Hopefully you'll give these recipes a try, and if so, definitely leave me a comment down below because I love hearing what people think of what we kind of eat here on a regular basis. So definitely stay tuned, and we shall see you next time.